I'm Sophia, and I'm about to tell you how my life in Miami went from a dream life to a miserable one. It all started when my husband, Juan, came up with the brilliant idea of inviting his brother to stay with us. Juan and I were like a sunny Latin version of Romeo and Juliet, until his brother Pedro came on the scene. It was as if someone threw a grenade in the middle of our happiness, and everything exploded. We were living our best life in Miami, with sunny beaches, our tropical nights, and of course, our love. But Pedro's arrival changed everything. I don't even know why Juan thought it would be a good idea. Inviting your brother to live with you? What could go wrong, right? Well, it all went wrong. From that moment on, our love story became a soap opera full of betrayals, secrets, and a touch of madness. I remember the day Pedro arrived. Juan was excited, I was excited, but neither of us had any idea that our lives would change so drastically. Pedro walked into our house with a smile and a suitcase full of problems. Not that he was bad, but something in his look made it clear that he wasn't just along for the ride. The first few days were like a party. Laughter, delicious Latin food, and nights full of funny stories. Everything was great, until I began to notice something strange in the way Pedro looked at me. His eyes, those dark eyes, carried with them a secret I couldn't decipher. So far so good, if a little uncomfortable. But things got out of control when Juan started having the brilliant idea of leaving us home alone. Can you imagine? Juan thought it would be great for his brother and his wife to spend time together while he was at work. In what universe could that possibly work out? Things got interesting when I found myself drinking drinks and chatting with Pedro in an inappropriate way. I don't know how to explain it, but there was something, something that shouldn't have been there. We started talking about our lives, and suddenly, we were sharing laughs as if we were old friends. But friends? That word was no longer enough. My thoughts became chaotic. How could I feel so connected to my husband's brother? My head was torn between loyalty to John and the affair with Peter. Each talk became more dangerous, like walking through a minefield. We decided to keep our connection a secret. We started hiding, sneaking messages, spending more time together than we should. The lying game started, and I became the worst version of me, I started to hide what was really going on. It was exciting, but the guilt would take over every time I came home and saw Juan. The tension grew like a storm brewing. Juan started noticing things, asking questions I couldn't answer without lying. The nights became uncomfortable, and my mind was torn between guilt and the forbidden thrill of being with Pedro, his brother. The scenes between Pedro and me became intense. Every embrace, every glance, it was as if we were dancing on the edge of an abyss. We knew this couldn't last forever, but neither of us wanted to stop. Then everything exploded. Pedro had forced me to be intimate with him, and that's when I decided to tell my husband everything. The truth came out, and it was as if the world came crashing down around me. The confrontation was horrible, like a soap opera scene where everyone screams and no one listens. The consequences were devastating. Juan was furious, my family was disappointed, and I was in the middle of an emotional hurricane. Pedro and I faced the reality of what had happened, and we couldn't escape the accusing stares. There I was, in the middle of the ruins of what was once my perfect life. The question was, how do we go on from here? And that is a story for another day. This was just the beginning of my nightmare, and I promise you there is much more to come. Now I will tell you how it all started. Get ready for more drama, intense emotions, and a touch of craziness. So, you know, my husband Juan decided to bring his brother Pedro from Colombia. An idea that sounded great in theory, but the practice was like jumping into the void without a parachute. My relationship with Juan was going very well, but Pedro's entrance was like a hurricane that ruined everything in its path. Pedro's arrival was announced by Juan with the same excitement as a child in a toy store. My brother is coming to stay, he said with that smile that normally melted me. 
but this time, that smile held more trouble than I could handle. When Pedro arrived, everything seemed fine. He smiled, he brought the positive energy of Colombia, and somehow, he managed to make us all feel excited about his visit. At first, the house was like a fun trip, but soon it would turn into a Latin drama of the good kind. I remember that first night as a mixture of laughter, music, and the aroma of Colombian food. Pedro told stories, we all laughed, and I tried to ignore that strange feeling I felt every time our eyes met. But who could resist the Colombian charm? The conversations with Pedro became deeper, the laughter more complicit, and the looks, well, the looks started to say, well, the looks started to say more than they should. Next thing I knew, we were in the middle of a Colombian novella, but this one had the potential to ruin my life. Juan was spending quite a bit of time at work, leaving Pedro and I with more alone time. And this is where things got more complicated. It started in subtle ways. One day, while I was in the kitchen making coffee, I noticed Pedro watching me in a different way. Those intense looks that I used to think were just part of his friendly personality, now had a different tinge to them. At first, I ignored it. How weird could it be? We were family after all. But the looks moved on to something else. Pedro started making excuses to spend time with me. He would pull topics out of thin air, propose talks that became more and more personal. It was as if he was trying to build a bridge between us, one that shouldn't exist. One day, he surprised me by inviting me to watch a movie. How about we relax a little and watch a movie together, he said with a smile that somehow made me uncomfortable. I didn't know how to react. Even though my mind was full of warnings and alarm lights flashing, I agreed. I didn't want to be rude or arouse suspicion. So, we found ourselves in front of the screen, sharing the couch as if we were on a secret date. As the movie progressed, I felt a little tension. Peter's stares became more insistent, and I, caught between discomfort and curiosity, didn't know what to do. After the movie, things got stranger. Pedro was trying to find excuses to be alone with me. Let's go for coffee, he would suggest with a playful smile, or I have something to show you on the computer. Every moment became a game of dangerous rapprochement and I, without realizing it, was being dragged into a realm I didn't even know existed. The conversations became more intimate, Peter would share personal details he had never mentioned before. His life, his dreams, his desires. Sometimes he would ask me about my relationship with Juan, and although at first I responded evasively, I found it harder and harder to hide what was happening. I found myself trapped in this situation. On the one hand, I felt a responsibility to Juan, my husband. On the other hand, the attraction that Pedro had woven around me was pushing me into an abyss, from which I did not know how to escape. My thoughts were a tangle of confusion. I wondered if Peter felt the same way, if this was just a game for him, or something more. The line between reality and fantasy was blurring, and I, trapped, was torn between freedom and inevitable destruction. Every moment, every intense look, was like a step closer to infidelity. And even though part of me knew this was wrong, the other part was thirsting for that forbidden connection. The game of hide-and-seek was getting riskier, and my heart was pounding with a mixture of excitement and fear. So continued this real-life Colombian novel, where each page seemed to take me further away from the reality I knew. And though I tried to resist Pedro's charm, something inside me was torn between loyalty and temptation. The only sure thing in this chaos was that things were about to explode, and I didn't know if I could avoid the disaster that was coming. The plot was getting worse, and I was caught in the center of this hurricane that threatened to destroy everything. The plot was getting murkier, and I was trapped in this story, I didn't know if I could get out alive. Things began to take a dark turn that even in my worst nightmares I had never imagined. It was a day like any other. I was in my room, changing my clothes, when I noticed that the door was ajar. At first, I thought it had been an oversight on my part, but I soon realized that something wasn't right. 
and there he was, Peter, peeping at me from the crack in the door with a strange look on his face. Discomfort came over me. I hurried to cover myself, feeling the invasion of my privacy in a way I had never experienced before. I left the room trying to downplay it, to convince myself that maybe it had been a misunderstanding. But deep down, I knew something was very wrong. Days passed, and that scene repeated itself. Pedro would spy on me while I was in my room, even when I was sleeping. It was as if the line between reality and nightmare blurred. Discomfort settled into my daily life, and every moment alone became a battle, between my need for privacy and Pedro's invasive presence. I tried to confront him, but he would always find an excuse. I was just looking for something, he would say with a smile that tried to be innocent. But in his eyes, I saw the truth. A truth that neither of us was willing to face. The tension in the house had increased. Juan, oblivious to everything, was still immersed in his work, and I, dealing with the storm that was about to break out. Pedro moved like a shadow, always present, always watching. And I, caught in this dangerous dance, was torn between confusion and fear. Every moment alone became a challenge. I didn't know when or where he would be watching me. My own home became a prison, and the pent-up tension threatened to explode at any moment. The nights were the worst. I would wake up feeling that piercing gaze on me, as if I was being judged even in my dreams. How had this gone so far? How had I allowed this situation to escalate in such an unhealthy way? As the days went by, the situation became more untenable. Every time I crossed glances with Pedro, I felt a mixture of disgust and fear. But there was also that part of me that felt trapped in a game I didn't know how to get out of. My attempts to talk to Juan about what was happening resulted in arguments that went nowhere. The tension between us was mounting, and my life was falling apart like a house of cards. The plot of this real-life Colombian novel was getting more twisted, darker. And as the tension grew, so did my fears. How much more could I take before it all boiled over? How was I going to face Juan, my family, myself, when the truth came out? The plot was approaching the breaking point, and I, caught in this spiral of secrets and lies, didn't know if I would make it out alive. The storm was brewing, and I was in the eye of the hurricane, waiting for the impact that would change everything. The day I dreaded, the day I wished would never come, finally materialized. The fabric of my life was spilling over into an abyss from which there was no escape. The tipping point was just around the corner, and my world was about to fall apart. I was in my room, sorting through clothes in a desperate attempt to maintain some normalcy in my life. But the air was charged, as if I knew something was going to happen. And then, like a wolf stalking its prey, Peter walked in. His gaze was intense, full of desire, and something darker that I could not comprehend. He approached me, like a shadow looming over everything, and before I could react, he forced me to cross a line we should never have crossed. I don't know why I didn't react, why I allowed it to happen. Maybe it was fear, confusion, or the paralysis of being trapped in that situation. But at that moment, any trace of resistance vanished and we found ourselves in a dark corner of the room, sharing a moment of intimacy that not even in my wildest nightmares would I have imagined. After that instant, Pedro left the room as if nothing had happened. I stood there in the middle of the room, reality hitting me. I couldn't process what had just happened. My thoughts were in chaos, a confused mixture of horror, disbelief and disgust at myself. The room closed in on me, as if the walls were witnesses to what had happened. I felt trapped in a black hole, with no light at the end of the tunnel. My body was trembling, but my mind was in a state of shock, unable to process the magnitude of what I had just experienced. Pedro had crossed an irrevocable line, and I was on the brink of an emotional abyss. I felt vulnerable, broken, as if the very essence of my being had vanished in that instant. How could I have allowed this to happen? How did I allow tragedy to enter my life in this way? The silence in the room was deafening. 
And as the shadows closed in around me, a brutal truth gripped me, there was no turning back. The plot of this real-life novel was getting darker, more complicated, and I, caught in the epicenter of the storm, faced the truth of what my life was becoming. I stood there, stunned and silent, wondering how I was going to face the day ahead. The confrontation with reality loomed like a fierce storm, and I was in the eye of the hurricane, with no escape. The plot had reached its breaking point, and the uncertainty of the future enveloped me like a lingering shadow. Tears that refused to fall gathered in my eyes, reflecting the pain and confusion that clung to my soul. My life was no longer the same, and the nagging question was how to move forward after crossing this point of no return. The plot had become more intense, more frightening, and I, desperately searching for answers, prepared to face the consequences of this fateful moment. That night, when Juan returned from work, he found me in the midst of an anxiety attack. The words poured out of my mouth like an overflowing river, narrating the dark truth that had been hidden in the shadows of our life. The expression on Juan's face went from surprise to indignation in a matter of seconds. The silence that followed was more deafening than any word spoken. His eyes reflected a mixture of fury and pain, as if he had been wounded to the core of his being. Without a word, Juan left the house. I followed him, trying to stop him, but the coming storm was beyond my control. The scene that followed was a chaos of screams, blows, and fury. Juan hit Pedro with an anger I had never seen before. The situation was horrible, as if hell itself had broken loose in our home. I fell caught in the middle of a hurricane, unable to stop the destruction unfolding before my eyes. Finally, Juan threw Pedro out of the house with strong words and insults. He told him that he never wanted to see him again, that he was dead to us. And as Pedro walked away, taking with him the storm he had unleashed, the house was plunged into a silence broken by muffled sounds and immense pain. One, with his breathing agitated and his face marked by the violence of what had just happened. We looked at each other, but we were no longer the same. It was at that moment, in the gloom of our devastated house, that one asked for my forgiveness. His words were a whisper laden with regret, and the reality of what we had lost settled into our broken hearts. We were both victims of a story that should never have been written. Night slipped into dawn, and we found ourselves silent, trapped in the darkness of our own decisions. The room was filled with a heavy air, permeated with the tragedy we had created. Reality was pounding like a hammer, and we faced the consequences. The days that followed were horrible. The house, which used to be our refuge, became a reminder of what had happened. The shadows of betrayal and violence clung to every corner, and I, lost in my own thoughts, struggled to find a way out. My relationship with Juan was fractured, and although we tried to rebuild what was left, it was like trying to repair a broken mirror. The cracks remained obvious and painful. Every look, every word, was marked by the scar of that fateful night. The family was also divided. The news spread quickly, looks of disappointment and judgment followed us wherever we went. Confidence in us crumbled, and though we tried to explain how it all happened, the shadow of mistrust lingered. But amidst all the chaos and devastation, Juan and I tried to find hope. We faced our own weaknesses, the dark reality of our actions. We immersed ourselves in difficult conversations, and in searching for a way to heal the wounds we ourselves had caused. That was, without a doubt, one of the worst experiences of my life. Going through the storm of betrayal and violence left deep scars, marking a page in our history that could not be erased. But in the midst of the darkness, we tried to find the light, to learn from our mistakes, and to move forward into an uncertain future.